possible response to what is perceived by the Israelis as a strategic threat. OK, Sam, thanks very much for that. I'm joined here in the studio by Amar Wakaf, who is a Syrian political analyst. Um, afternoon, Sam talked there about a tactical response. Is that how it will be uh, seen in the region by the other countries? I think we're playing too easily into the hands of, of the Israeli media machine, in a sense. Uh, you know, to say that uh, this has been in response for some smuggling of weapons between Syria and Lebanon, I think that's too easy to, uh, to predict. That certainly has been the line throughout the Western media all over the past 48 hours. But I take a different view. I think the Israeli government is really interested in, in the Syrian government falling, or at least Syria coming out of this crisis that is seeing at the moment as weak as possible. And what they've been trying to do recently is to, you know, up the ante with regards to pressing, pressuring uh, or pressing the Syrian government to either drag its feet into some sort of a regional war where the uh, Syrian army is currently dispersed in all sorts of internal places in Syria, cannot really mount a challenge, and test the relationship and this alliance between Syria, Iran, Russia, and whether they're going to run into their help. What we've seen yesterday in Damascus was that the president, he came out into the Syrian university, very defined, public, orderly fashion, and uh, there were a lot of supporters cheering his name. So, again, this, if he doesn't respond, he's going to lose a little bit of credibility amongst so, his supporters. I mean, by that, you, you think that he will be under pressure from within oh, yeah. uh, to, to respond? He's under tremendous pressure. There are a lot of Syrians who are saying, well, we, you know, we're being destroyed anyway. Why can't we destroy our enemies? And it's about a test of his leadership, about a test of whether he's up to it in a certain extent. But others would, would equally argue that is he you know, good enough to hold off his, his you know, cards to his chest or not? Amar, we also end up with this rather bizarre situation where the free Syrian army, the rebels, the, the, those against President Assad are, mm. I guess inadvertently, getting help from Israel. I mean, how does that play out long term? Well, if you take into consideration the, the point of view of the segment of Syrians who support the Garan government mm -hmm. against the rebellion, uh, they've been associating those people, you know, the, the armed opposition especially, with the Israelis from the very start. The armed opposition have, uh, you know, sort of helped the Israelis a lot by attacking air defense yeah. um, uh, positions of the Syrian army since very early on in the conflict. And that hasn't been look upon, looked upon, you know, very uh, favorably by, by the, those who support President Assad and the Syrian government. Now, with regards to the wider Arabic audience, there has always been a debate, you know, whose side is really Israel taking? Why isn't Israel helping the Syrian people by toppling the regime on one side? And others are saying, well, this is clearly a state that is openly defined to Israel, so Israel is helping the rebels. But this clear and blatant sort of very large-scale attack to a certain extent, I think is going to, weigh the swines, uh, is, uh, is going to sway the minds of uh, uh, quite a few people in the Arab world with regards to directly now associating the Syrian rebellion with at least, if not Israel, itself with Israeli interests in Syria. Interesting. And then, and then you, you bring in the American question, obviously as a strong ally of Israel, and yet not... Uh, I mean, President Obama's talked about crossing these lines and, and, and the use of chemical weapons, but now he's reigning back and doesn't seem to be prepared to arm the rebels to, to do anything to help them, even though Israel is a strong ally. I think the last thing the Americans would want in the, in the region is to see a region that is, you know, uncontrolled in a sense, go into a situation where all hell, hell breaks loose. And it's not only the Syrian situation, you could also draw parallels from the situation in Iran, where Israel have been pushing for the past at least three years to bomb Iran, do something serious about it, calling the international community. But the Americans have been saying, let's cool down, let's, let's try to, to sort this thing out rationally, in a sense, let's pressurize Iran by other means, and so on and so forth. I think Israel yesterday has, has sort of push the Americans to a sort of, you know, to an extent to say, well, if you don't do anything about it, probably we will. OK, very interesting to talk to you, Amar Waka. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, the Georgian president has denied suggestions that one of the Boston bombings